So today we're going to be looking at the one patch for ST that you should be running even if you don't care about patching ST whatsoever. So today we're going to be looking at the font 2 patch. So the font 2 patch will basically let you have backup fonts within ST. Now, for most terminals, this isn't exactly a problem. So what they'll do is just pull from wherever your other programs pull fonts from. ST doesn't do this though. So if you don't have a font set in ST, it's going to do one of two things. So firstly, it's going to show no symbol. That's the good thing. The second thing it might do is just crash horribly. And for emojis, it will crash horribly. So today I'm going to show you how to fix that. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do. And let's jump right into it. Okay, so first up, let's actually have a look at the page for font 2. Now, the example on here it shows is a good example. So this is with Powerline fonts. So with Powerline fonts, if there's nothing available, all it's going to do is just show no symbol. So as I said, this is probably the best outcome you can get. So most symbols will just show nothing if they don't have a symbol actually in your current font. But as I mentioned with emojis, they might be a bit more of a problem. So to get this installed, you're going to want to download the newest version of the patch. So there isn't a version made for the newest version of ST, so just download the newest version. Now, this isn't exactly the best way to do it, but you're going to have to do it like this anyway. So then what you're going to need to do is if you don't already have ST installed, obviously download ST through whatever means you want to through the AUR or preferably from just the ST website. So you should probably know how to do that if you're looking at a video like this. And then we're going to come into the actual folder that ST is in. So I've just got this in my repos directory. It doesn't really matter where it is. I just keep it here so it's easy to get to. Okay, so you're going to want to actually install that patch you downloaded before. So I've just got it saved in here. So to do that, let's look at the man page for patch and that'll basically tell us how we do this. So it's very simple to install a patch. All you do is run patch dash p the number of the patch. So in this case, if it's your first patch, it's going to be one, then two, then three, then four, and so on and so forth. Nothing too complicated there. And then just redirect the patch into the patch program. So that's really, really simple to do. Assuming we have a clean instance of ST, and I'll get back to why it should probably be a clean instance in just a moment, what we can do is run patch-p and then the number for the patch, so in this instance it's just one, and then just redirect the patch in. Now obviously your path is going to be different, but I've just got this in my patches folder. So the reason I mentioned it should probably be a clean instance of ST is the same reason for any of the other patches. So if you have any other patches installed, the patch might fail to install. And this is because the patches are made for a specific version of ST. So if you've installed some patches, the version is going to be slightly different. So if you've installed patches though, you've probably already run into this issue. If this is your first patch, go ahead and run this and it'll work just fine. So I'm not going to because I don't have a clean instance of ST. So what you're going to want to do now is check out your config.def.h. So I'm just going to use my config.h just because I've already changed stuff around, but the config.h is generated from the config.def.h. So just have a look in that file. Okay. So now that you've done all that, you'll see this array in here right at the top of the file. So you've got your regular font. I think it's defined to something like mono by default, and then you'll have this font array. I don't believe there's anything in this by default, there might be something, but if there's not, then you can just start adding stuff like this. So if you never work with an array of strings in C, it's just a string separated by commas, nothing too special there. So what are these fonts that I actually have in here? So I've got Hacker Nerd font, and that's for my Powerline symbols. I've got IPA Gothic, and that's not actually for Powerline, that is actually for uh, Japanese symbols. And then I've got Symbola for my Unicode symbols. So that's for all of the emojis. So I mentioned before that emojis are a serious issue. But what about these other ones? So let's just get rid of these and see what it actually does. So if I just comment that out. And I let's just comment that one out as well. So if we just leave it with Symbola. So now if we just quit out of this. And obviously you're going to have to reinstall ST as well. So we can just do that on camera. So sudo make uninstall. If you've already got ST uninstalled, you don't have to do this step, but I'm going to have to. And then if you want to install it, you can go sudo make clean install. And give it a couple of seconds and it will compile the program. And there we go. So now if I bring up a new instance of ST, you'll notice that some things are slightly different. So my font slightly changed for my symbol down here. It's not actually using the same symbol. I think it's just found something to go in its place. So that's fine. It doesn't look exactly right, but it's not crashing the program and it's not completely invisible. I think if I was to use like a full power line prompt, it might be a bit worse as you can see from this here, but it's still usable. 
So the other font that I had installed was a Japanese font. And the reason I've got that is just because of all the, the anime garbage I listened to. So let's bring up NC Spot. This is just a CLI Spotify player. So if we look in here, you'll notice that a lot of symbols are just completely missing. So that's because I don't have a Japanese font available and all of these use Japanese characters. Some of them are visible. I, I guess they must have symbols in some other font that I'm using, but most of them aren't. So those fonts aren't really bad to be missing. So if you're just missing like your Powerline fonts, Japanese fonts, Korean fonts, Cyrillic fonts, any stuff like that, it's not going to crash your application. So it'll be fine to miss those out. But if we're missing Unicode symbols, this is where stuff actually gets really bad. So let's just bring these ones back and I'll comment out my symbol line. And obviously I'm going to have to get rid of this comma here, otherwise it will break. Okay. So I'll keep this instance of ST open just so we don't have serious problems trying to get ST reinstalled. So let's just go sudo make uninstall and sudo make clean install. So I'll quit this instance here and okay. I'll bring him a new instance of ST and as you can see the little symbol here has changed just a little bit. It's not too noticeable but if you had a full power line prompt you'd notice like this that the symbols that were missing before are now there. So what about those Japanese symbols we saw before? So if you look in NC spot again, as we will see in just a moment, there's not missing symbols in here anymore, so that's really good. At least ST doesn't crash on symbols like that. Now, I did mention emojis, so what's going to happen with emojis? Now, not all of them are fatal, so if we bring up LF, we'll see that all of my folder icons are missing in here. So if we bring up LF in this one, we all have folder icons and little file icons and stuff like that. But that one's not fatal. So let's go to something that I know has an emoji in it. So if we go to my i3 folder and scroll down through this. So one of these scripts has an emoji in it. So if I get to that script, you'll see what happens. And there we go. And it completely dies. So on certain emojis that ST doesn't know how to handle when it's missing a font, it just completely dies. So if you have emojis in any of your scripts, it just won't work. Now this is why I need to have this patch installed, and I really recommend that you have it installed as well. So I will bring back the Symbola font, and I'll just talk to you about why why these fonts in particular. Okay, so we go sudo make uninstall, and sudo make clean install. Now let's bring that instance of ST back open as soon as this one installs. There we go. LF, and go into my i3 folder, and we scroll through this, and... There we go, now it's not crashing. I think it was this script right here that made it crash. So it's got like a download emoji, it's got a upload emoji, and it's got a stop emoji. I don't know which one exactly causes ST to crash. One of them does, so make sure you have the Symbola font actually set up. Now, the reason I chose these fonts in particular. So let's just go over to here into my config.h. Okay. So we've got my main font, which is JetBrains Mono. Now the reason I've got that as my main font is because I like this as my main font for like my regular characters. And then I've got Hacknode font as my next backup font. So occasionally I'll run into Powerline symbols. I like Hacknode font as like a Powerline symbol prompt. I'm not a big fan of it as like a main prompt. Really anything will work here. So if you want to use one of the like patched uh, source code pro or patch noto fonts, Anything will work as long as it has Powerline symbols in it. There's a big list of Powerline fonts. You can find it pretty easily if you just look up Powerline fonts GitHub. So then we've got IPA Gothic. I picked this font because it's something that's just available in the standard repos for Japanese characters. I also use this for Japanese characters in my web browser. For me, it doesn't really matter what I picked. I don't actually do any typing in Japanese. I just need it to actually view symbols. So for me, I just picked literally anything. And then Symbola, I picked because at the time it was really easy to install from the AUR and then for a while it completely died. I don't know if you can install it from the AUR just yet, I hope you can, because I don't know of any other emoji fonts that actually work properly within ST. I think you can maybe get color emoji with like Noto color emoji. I think Luke Smith did a video on that, but personally I don't really care about color emoji in ST. So if you want to add more fonts to this, it's pretty simple. All you do is just add a comma after the last string in there, go down to the next line. You don't have to go down to the next line, it's just a bit neater. 
and then just start typing the new font. So let's go with something like Fira Code. I don't actually have this installed, so I'm not gonna actually run ST like this. But then after you put the name of the font in, you put a colon, and then you either type in size or pixel size. I don't remember why I was using pixel size. Size is actually like a point size. Pixel size is a different metric. I can't remember why I did pixel size. I would recommend using size for most things. I know that for the emoji font, for it to properly scale, you do need to use pixel size. For other fonts, you can use size. I know that someone's probably gonna know why you should use one or the other, but I've just been using pixel size. So I like to also enable um, font anti-aliasing just because the fonts look a little bit better. And also I enable font auto hint because the fonts also just look a little better. So all you need to do now is just recompile ST and assuming you have this font installed, it'll be working as your next backup font. Okay, so you can just do that for literally as many fonts as you want. Obviously, if you put a hundred fonts in here, it's not gonna really do anything after the first maybe five, unless you have a hundred different language fonts, but you, you probably don't. If you do, I, I guess you could do that if you really wanted to. Obviously, it will also affect your ST load time if you do something dumb like that, but with like four fonts, it's basically not noticeable. So why isn't this a problem with other terminals? Now, I don't actually know, but I assume the other terminals are written in a sensible way. So if we just bring up Kitty, for example. So I've got JetBrains Mono Medium as my font in Kitty, but unlike ST, it doesn't crash when it comes across a emoji. So what Kitty does is it will load up extra fonts to fill in the spaces that it needs to fill in. ST doesn't do that. I don't know why ST doesn't do that and Kitty does. Okay, it's because ST is just a weirdly written program. But if we go into my scripts folder and we go into the i3 folder, scroll through this, as we can see, nothing crashes because it just pulls in fonts properly. This one actually does pull in Noto color emoji. So yeah, I'm not, a, as I said, I'm not a big fan of color emojis in my terminal, but I guess I could fix that if I wanted to. It's just not too important to me because I just don't really use Kitty that much. But this video is not about Kitty, it's about ST. So as I mentioned at the start, even if you don't care about patching ST whatsoever, this is almost like an essential feature to ST. It shouldn't be crashing when it comes across emojis and this is the only way to fix it. Obviously you could just never have emojis in your terminal, but on the off chance that you have a file with an emoji in it, you need to have an emoji font in your backup fonts to actually get this to work. Otherwise ST will crash and you have absolutely no idea why it has crashed. Really ST should just be showing no symbol there. I don't know why it doesn't. It might just be because emojis are typically wider than regular characters. So it just doesn't really know what to do without a font for it. That's probably the reason for it, but I'm not really sure. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you notice that out there it's actually really, really dark right now, it's because if you notice during the video, it's about 9 p.m. right now. I was working on assignments all day and kind of forgot to record a video, so I started recording about 8.20. Anyway, we'll just forget that. I think the lighting's fine. I've never actually recorded this late at night, so I don't actually know how the lighting is going to be. I guess we'll see in post. It looks fine on my recording, but sometimes the recording's a bit weird. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help you really appreciate. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social link. So that'll be like my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that other stuff. So feel free to check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below. So if you want to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other donate links down below. So feel free to use any of those. But obviously, as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.